So you can see if you have it in the spreadsheet. Yes. Yeah. Your, your, your team name, the name of your project. Oh, okay, I have it. And you are in middle school or, okay, perfect. Are you ready? Of course. You just have the, the, the button here. Okay, it's, it's working. Okay, perfect. So first of all, you're gonna start? Yes. Yes. So first of all, we're really excited to have you here, and we're really excited to be seeing your presentation. Uh, I'm Amalia. I'm from Greece. This is Marco. He's from Portugal, and then we also have an online judge from China. Yes. Perfect. So you can start with your presentation, and then when we're done, we're just gonna ask you like a couple of questions to get to know your project and you better. So nothing too serious, just to learn more about the amazing thing I'm sure you've created. So good luck and have fun with it. Hello everyone. My name is Terkel Taibi. I'm the business analysis for this group. And this is our leader, Hamza Sharif. And this is our AI engineer, Yusuf Al Gandhi. Our project is called CB Detected. What is CB? CB stands for cyberbullying. What our project do? It depends cyberbullying. It's attacking it, spikes it. So what is the issue? The issue mainly is cyberbullying. It's a very serious problem that many, many people suffer from. Cyberbullying is very common and happens mainly in uh, communication apps like WhatsApp, Discord, etc. Moreover, the old report system uh, were manually done and it was inefficient, and it was very slow for reporting the bullies. So how did we solve this problem? We made this new AI to, uh, to improve the old AI uh, system, and it's imp uh, improving its automacy and also its uh, quality. How does, this, how does this work? First, when the report is sent in, the AI will note the text chat, look for keywords. Then it will note the voice chat. It will see what is the most common used word and how is this word used? Is it being yelled or just a talk between friends? Again, all of these options are optional, enableable, and all. After that, it will make a decision. It will rank it on a scale from one to 10, seeing if five has to be ranked by a human. Technical skills. The code's effectiveness. We made sure the code uses minimal resources. The code's efficiency, we made sure it's fast. And during this, we also had to translate between languages, HTML, JavaScript, and Python. We will do a demo now. Yeah, uh, you Okay, so uh, can, can we just like uh, quickly bring the... Of course, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, of course, of course, sure. Okay. Uh, it's kind of just probably because uh, the, the demonstration is here. Okay. So... Uh, okay. Hello? Yes. Here we have our voice recognition. So if I see a, a, say a keyword chair, chair, it will recognize it and say 100% on that screen, recognizing it. Here we have our text recognition. When I type a keyword, if it's capital, Mix capital, it will say detected. Now, the cool thing about this, even if it's in a string, CH 
AIR will always still be detected. Based on our experience, the five pillars of AI is perception. We use perception in our AI to improve its voice apparatuses. That means it can sense the voice. Also, its ability to read through the text chat. Reasoning. Reasoning. The AI, when it detects something and starts to think about the punishment, it will. It it has a ranking of offensive system. If it's a really high level, there is a serious punishment. If it's a really low level, it's not really that serious. And it can know if it's a joke between friends or a serious cyberbullying. So it has its reasons to perform a punishment. Learning over the time the AI is on, it will learn what's the most common offense and what's the most rare offense. Social impact. How does our AI impact society? There is many teenagers or children that are on social media like WhatsApp, Discord, and they can get they can be easy targets for cyberbullying. So our AI can defend them. They can report them. They can like end the misery of cyberbullying. Representation. We want this AI to be a beacon of hope in the digital world to be a safe space, a place you can relax. Conclusion, after all these experiences, we just realized something. All the skills, the five pillars of AI, we, we realized that all of that skills, we can put it in more bigger projects, maybe closer projects. It's not necessarily on cyberbullying detected. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really, really amazing. So I want, first of all, to congratulate you. Concerning your project, you approach it very, very well. You identify a clear issue that is cyberbullying. And you know how, how many problems um, are related with, with cyberbullying, with the presence of, of the young ones on, on, on the internet, social media, and so on. So it was very target, very well targeted in terms of, of, of the problem where you want to use AI. And one of the questions related with, with AI is why we should build AI for good. And in this particular, you take this clear in, in, in attention to see, so I have this amazing technology. How can I use this technology to support others? So is, as you were uh, mentioned, the big five ideas, uh, of AI has a very, very strong impact. And of course, also in, in the way that you um, address all, 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 all the situation, identify a problem, see how it can be solved, see how can we facilitate uh, different ways so that cyberbullying uh, is stopped. And from there, just, okay, let's create a solution that implemented and you, uh, pick up two different fields of artificial intelligence, speech recognition, and also in terms of analysis, uh, text uh, analysis. And just let me say, I think it's a great, great project. And once again, congratulations. And I was saying in the end, don't stop, just keep building your idea, just make it uh, great and greater and greater because this is a huge issue in terms of, of startup bullying. Thank you. Amazing project. I agree with everything uh, you said. Um, I also love the title, CB Detective. That's that's a really good title. Uh, I had two questions for you. The first one is, so obviously this is an amazing technology and you combine many different aspects of AI. So do you have any ideas about what design aspects you could add to it? 
So how would the user know there is cyberbullying? Or if there is cyberbullying, what would happen to the user? Or yeah. So do you have any ideas about design elements such as, let's say, a certain color, like an alarm or a red button? I don't know. So we might add to our AI, like when it talks to the victim, it can maybe use friendly sentences to feel like they, to make them feel like they're comfortable and they're in the right place. And also maybe like add some friendly colors, like green or blue. Perfect. I think th this would be really good to make also uh, if there's cyberbullying, the victim feel better. Uh, and the other question is, so obviously cyberbullying is a really sensitive topic. And also in order for you to know whether there's cyberbullying, you need to collect a lot of data. Um, so what about the ethical implications while collecting the data when you analyze it to train the mo model, but also when it makes the predictions? Are there any unintended consequences or maybe a negative impact it could have? A negative impact? So sometimes it can be abused. The report system can be like used by wrong people or like in many situations when a cyberbullying is happening, the victim normally fights back. Like when they're receiving bad word, they might respond with bad word. So the culprit might use it against them with the report system. So that's a negative impact, but we have a little bit of solution for it, but it's not as e efficient or fast. So we have a worker to go in and manually check the text. I think that's a great idea. And I love how you've thought about it in a potential solution. Like it doesn't have to be the most efficient thing, but you have thought about an idea. So I think that's great. I don't know if our online judge has some questions for you, but it was an amazing project. Good job. Hi. Um... I really like your idea and you have very good intentions um, in your project and you define the problem well. Um, so I have like one ethical question that I want to ask you, like um, when you are defining like which words might be like a bullying words, like who do you think is more appropriate to define like which words might be the bullying words? we might be programmed the AI, like based on the cyberbullying. For example, let's say someone is using one of the, the victim family problems, for example. So we might program the AI to, re to realize the problem, not just see bad words and, okay, that's a punishment. We might let the AI know what's happening, aware of what's happening. So when it deals with the, victim it doesn't like bring out something that makes it uncomfortable like for example if they have family problems and the cyberbullying is using it against them the ai might not just say oh you have family problems or just bring it up because this may might make the victim less uncomfortable okay um all right i think you you had a good answer there Do you, do you want to ask anything else, Shansha? Um, no, that's the only question I have. Ah, okay. I, I would just like to, to give you a, a tip that I think could, could be interesting in terms of your project. As you know, uh, artificial intelligence is like an umbrella, and we have lots of different technologies and science uh, around it. So it's always uh, very important to have interdisciplinary teams with experts from different fields. So you uh, are mainly in terms of the technical side, the AI engineer, the data science, and, and so on. In this particular project, I think it will be very interesting if you're continuing um, building the project to have someone, an expert from the ethical fields, okay, so can help you address these questions as uh, uh, Mali was asking you and also Shansha. And as you know, there is also a lot of institutions, public and private institutions that deal with the question of, of cyberbullying. Why not talk with them and uh, receive inputs uh, from them, how you can address um, cyberbullying 
bullying, but in this case, in the in the um, online uh, space, so they can help you with you creating a really uh, an amazing tool that uh, for sure will will have a tremendous impact. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, maybe have a photo. <laughs>
So we don't have this project in the spreadsheet. So you can see the name on the screen and the category is middle school. Yeah. Is the idea 11 or 12? Uh, I think it's 11. Okay. Yeah, we have to add it. I'm just gonna name it Miss CIA. Okay. So hello and welcome and thank you very much for, for being here. It's a huge pleasure to have you here to present your project and we really want to, to hear about it. We just saw the name and we are really curious to know what it's all about and just uh, take your time to present your, your ideas. Uh, my name is Marco. I'm a teacher from Portugal. Here with me is uh, Amalia is a high school student from Greece and online is Shan Shan here with us. Um, you will make your presentation and in the end we'll make you a few uh, questions, but easy ones. Okay, so please. Hello? Okay. AI, Miss Sia, Cooking Intelligent Assistance by Prometa. About me, my name is Prometa. I'm 12 years old. I'm in grade seven, the Cal School GSS Middle School. Content. First, we'll be looking at the problem, intro, solution, society, impact. The problem. Cooking can impact in many ways, and there are a lot of disadvantages. For example, if you want to if you want to make something at a certain time, you might not know the dish, or you might not have the best cooking skills. We might all face these problems and many more while cooking. Intro. My vision. Miss Sia is an AI robot that helps people with cooking. It has simple data like Siri and Alexa. For example, if you ask it a simple question about cooking, it would answer in a simple way using its search engines. Miss Yuck can interact with humans and help humans to cook. It's as tall as an average human and can change its hands to either a cooking utensil or a cleaning utensil. As two cameras and laser cameras to adapt to its environment and see what materials it's dealing with. Miss Sia has a lot of data and info about cooking. Solution. Project Miss Sia. It helps with recipes, making dishes, timer, and cleanup, so you don't have to worry about all that. Use of AI in Miss Sia. Perception. Use of two cameras and a few laser cameras, as I was saying before, scanning and adapting to its materials and utensils and just like the normal kitchen. Representation. It collects data information from search engines. Plus, if you want to add your own little style to some dish, you could also instruct it to and program it to cook for you. Reasoning. It can clean, cook, and time. Society impact. It's interactive, so it can help you. It can talk with you, and if you got if you have any questions, you can ask it and instruct it. It can help with cook, cooking, and cleaning, as I said before. And it has all measurements, for example, with weight, amount, and etc. It can also recommend things as well. Conclusion. Miss Sia is very helpful helpful when it comes to cooking. It can reduce the amount of humans working and cooking. Thank you. Any questions? My acknowledgement, my instructors, Mr. Jordan, Sir Ruse, Miss Nikki, thank you all. Without you, I wouldn't have such a project.
first of all, congratulations. Great idea, great project, and uh, such a fantastic uh, presentation. I think that everybody here in the room and everybody that is watching us online, we are eager to see your project done so you can have a solution like this that can help us in a lot of different things. Uh, concerning your project, everything was very well addressed. From the beginning, you identify a situation, a problem. Let's see how way I can help us. And from there, you just structured uh, very, very well, make the connection with the five, uh, five big ideas in the way that you, you, you can address that. Um, I will just, um, in terms of, of the, the, the features of your um, uh, solution, and then maybe you can discuss it a little bit more how to implement it or to create a prototype. I think, I was just thinking here, that will be very interesting is Miss CAI could, could um, for example, give warnings in terms of people that have, for example, some kind of allergies, gluten and this kind of things. Okay, so this could be pre-configured. So she could have the profile of the different users. And once he asked to prepare a particular meal, the system could say, okay, no, you have this kind, so you have to be aware, you have to be careful related with this. Um, but once again, congratulations, great project, and just keep working on that because one of these days I know that I'm, I'm going to buy an example of your <laughs> project. Thank you. Yeah, amazing idea. I know I love cooking and baking, so if I had Miss Sia with me, it would definitely be a lot of help. Um, and it would also be really useful in cleaning because I always hate cleaning after I cook. Um, I also have a suggestion and then one question for you. Uh, my suggestion would be you could even kind of um, use Miss Sia to know what ingredients you have at home and she could suggest what dishes you can make with the ingredients you have at home. So I think this would be really cool to help a lot in the management Perfect. Sorry about that. So you could even uh, use it for the, your supermarket list to know what ingredients you could you should purchase. So I think it's a really useful solution, and I've loved I love how you've thought about it in multiple ways. So it's the cleaning, the cooking, you basically include everything that a kitchen may need. So my only question is, how did you come up with this idea? Like, is it something, for example, you want to cook and you you were thinking, hmm, maybe it would be good to have some help. How did, how did you come up with this great idea? Hello? So Mr. Um, Dr. Jordan, he was asking us, what daily problems do you face every day? And there's like cleaning and like most kids took that idea. So I kind of thought outside the box and say, oh, cooking is also a pain in the butt. So that's, I chose that. And, I, and then I kind of developed it using, cause he told us about five things that's important in AI. So I kind of thought about it and I started structuring it and like going on with the idea. I think that's awesome, like an everyday problem and a solution to something we all face. Even for elderly people, I was thinking right now, like old people um, might face some difficulties, you know, cooking every day. So it would be a really good assistant for them. Uh, yeah, I love your project. Congrats. Good job. And then we have, um, maybe you have some more questions? Yeah, uh, I agree with what you said. And food is an important part of our daily life. Uh, and I like that in your design, Miss Sia can customize recipes according to um, like perfect personal preferences. Like personalization is a very important application in artificial intelligence. Um, so I have one little question. Like when we are cooking, we may sometimes use um, knives or we, we use fire, which sometimes could be a little bit dangerous. Uh, like, have you ever thought about the put, 
like the potential risks uh, you might encounter uh, if we want to use uh, such a cooking uh, assistant in our life. And if you were to improve your design, like what adjustments would you make to avoid avoid those risks? Um, something, uh, that's why I added like laser cameras because it can like show like, oh, there's a hand here or like, oh, there's something, there's fire. So it can like adapt and see that there's something and it could warn itself, I suppose. And uh, that's what I've cleared up so far. I'm really glad that you have already thought about uh, like potential risks, like um, using the laser cameras to detect um, your hands and avoid being cut by, by those things. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I think it was all. Eh? Thank you. And don't stop here. Okay, just keep uh, discovering how you can implement all of this. This is somehow a complex project, to even to build a prototype. Just try to find out other, other um, of your colleagues that can join you, that can uh, research in, in, in different areas. And we'll be waiting once you have the prototype and invite us uh, to test it. Okay, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, thank you very much. Huge pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.
Okay. So this term is auditive. We already have it. It's you should add that it's in middle school. We don't because I haven't added it. Yes. No, one more. <laughs> I can start. Yes. So hi, it's great to have you here today. We're really excited to be hearing about your project. Uh, I'm Amalia. I'm a high school student from Greece, and I'll be one of the three judges um for your project we also have marco teacher from portugal and we'll have shamsha which is who is from china uh she's our online judge uh so you can just start with your presentation and then we'll just ask a couple of simple questions nothing too uh too crazy just to get to know you and your project better so feel free to start whenever you're ready and good luck have fun with it uh, okay uh, hi everybody assalamu alaikum uh, I'm Hadi Sadhan, and these are my friends and teammates, uh, Azam al Tayri on my left and Faisal Hizami on my right. Uh, I want to present to you our uh, like uh, AI uh, project, Oddity. What is Oddity? Oddity is an audio security system that uses sound to take out homes and to make, to make homes safer against break-ins. It's very easy to use and to set up, for and is very affordable for people who are less fortunate. Okay, so how did we come up with the name Oddity? Well, we took the first three letters from audio and the last three letters from security, which was, I think, a little bit creative, not that much, but pretty good. So that's how we created the name Oddity. What is Oddity's purpose? The purpose of Oddity is to grant people a safer household to make you and your house safer also, I, I repeat again, that's an affordable price, not like apples. A not so fun fact is that two and a half million burglaries happen yearly. Just imagine that you bought a new Zelda game or a Pokemon game and you put it on a table, like right outside of your house or like inside of your house, and you go to sleep because you're tired. And then the next day you wake up with an urge to play that game. You go down and you find that game missing. You're obviously going to be demonstrated that may be a true story. <laughs> Using Oddity, we would love to majorly decrease the rate of burglaries. We want to provide a safe household for many people around the world, and we want to make home security affordable. How does Oddity work? Oddity uses audio sensors to perceive the world around it. Using those sensors, it detects whether a door is open or closed. This affects society in a good way by decreasing burglary rates drastically. How are we, how are we making Oddity? Well, we use Teachable Machine and Scratch. In Teachable Machine, we inserted different sounds of doors opening and closing. And in Scratch, we made it so every time a door opens or closes, it says that this door is open or this door is closed. And if you want to see the demo, we can show you. Uh, let's uh, have, you can show uh, uh, do you want to see the demo now or after the slide uh, we have it on this laptop if you'd like to see it uh, okay that's right there. okay so this is our demo of oddity demonstration basically this is the scratch code and if we open the door right now and wait a bit from door to view it says that now if we close it again the door could be closed that's basically just a short demo mm -hmm. now all i'm gonna say is get oddity quick off your porch because it's stolen <laughs> because rates are kind of high right now and thank you for listening <laughs> any thank questions you for you Thank you for your presentation. I, I really like the project and a really cool name from audio and security. Um, I also loved your passion and the jokes you read. It was a really enjoyable presentation and you presented it in a really clear and concise way. So good job. Um, also the idea, it was a really creative idea. I think we haven't seen anything like this before. Uh, obviously there are uh, security systems, but I think what you said, making security affordable and kind of available to everyone, that's really important. And it's also a really good societal impact, as you said. 
Uh, I think I only have one question and it relates more to the technical side. I don't know if you've thought about this, but um, so as you showed in the demo, uh, it knows when you open the door and when you close the door. So how does it distinguish when the door opens and when it closes? Um, may I answer? Yes, of course. Uh, basically, we use many different doors from many different houses. Like, for example, my grandma's house, my house, the house at Cows, and all these different houses. Using these different noises, we trained the model many numerous times until it distinguishes it very well, at least 70% success rate. I think that's great. And the fact you include many different houses from different parts, uh, it's good to avoid kind of if there is any bias. Uh, and I have one more question before uh, I give the microphone to our other judges. Um, so obviously you collected a lot of data to train it and I'm sure if you continue building this and I really motivate you to continue building this, uh, you'll add more data. So have you thought about any ethical implications your creation could have or maybe when collecting data, is there any way, where would this data be stored? Who would have access to it? Yes. Uh, okay, so based on my knowledge, uh, the ethical, like where the ethic uh, comf, uh, comes from in our project is that uh, we want people to like uh, have a cheap like house security, as we mentioned a lot of times. And we also want like people to have their privacy because some audio security systems, they record sound 24 seven and it, it may even like, go to the maybe like dark web or something. So we don't want that to happen. So it's only going to detect when the door opens and then it starts recording maybe, or it records it like, uh, like different patterns of like times because we want people just to get their information uh, like uh, information safe i think that's awesome and the fact you've considered like it's a little creepy if it records 24 7 so i think that's a really good i also have a suggestion actually about this you could even add kind of like a sensor maybe a thermal sensor or something of the sort so it could start recording when it senses that there's an object close or a proximity sensor so that it knows that oh wait there's a human or an object approaching, I, I should start recording now. So I think this could be a good way to kind of mitigate this um, ethical implication, as I said. So good job. I, I really enjoyed hearing about your project. Thank you for your presentation. A great job. Um, the way that you presented, uh, Amalia, um, already um, ask you some of the most uh, critical questions that you answer um, uh, very well. I think it's very interesting you thinking about this question of security and the way that you are target for people that cannot afford such uh, other that are more um, expensive. Um, I will just give you one or two suggestions related in here. Um, uh, one of them is try to find out other possibilities where AI can make even better your solution because right now you are very focused in terms of, of the doors opening and, and, and close and you can have uh, other other things like computer vision and so on. Another thing could be, for example, other kind of sounds that can um, happen outside of the house and automatically that uh, alarms or give a warning about a possible person that is uh, trying to enter the, the house. Concerning the doors, maybe some facial recognition that could recognize people that are authorized to open and, and to close the doors. In this case, we will not have what we call false positives. Okay, we are opening and close the door, but there, there is not danger around this. But I think you have an excellent background in, in terms of this. Just keep working on that, okay? Keep on developing, searching for, for new features, new functionalities, and in terms of social impact, the way that you address for the people that don't have the possibility, and a lot of times they are also, let's say, um, having uh, problems in terms of security in, in their houses is really a great project and fantastic. Yeah. Oh, Shantan, yeah. uh, Shantan, if you have any questions about the team. First off, for you. Uh, first of all, you did a really good job today, and um, like good ideas are very precious. And uh, you already had like a good idea to keep the house safe and reduce the burglary rate. And then you took your first step to realize this idea by like collecting data and making a demo. 
uh, that's very good. Uh, so I want to ask you a small question that did you, uh, like uh, when you creating this demo, did you encounter any difficulties in the process and how did you overco overcome it? Uh, my friend here wants the mic because he is uh, like the coder, everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we encountered many different difficulties. Uh, basically, two weeks ago, we started the project. And after three, four days, uh, we thought it was finished. But we were wrong, basically, fully, fully wrong. For, because we only recorded it, let's say, in my house, right? I went to mm -hmm. my cousin's house. Didn't work. The school doors didn't work. It didn't recognize them. It only recognizes uh, one kind of door. So what I did was I went to many different houses, recorded different sounds. And the day that I recorded the demo, I basically recorded all the sounds in Kaos, uh, uh house, basically. Well, I'm really glad to see that you have overcome the difficulties um, in the process of practice all by yourself. Um, that's very impressive. Yeah, I think I just want to thank you once again for your presentation. I think. Yes, of course. Okay. Um, you, 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 one of the things we're discussing here in, in this period of uh, Kine is about the difficulty. And, and, and you know, in, in AI nowadays with machine learning, we need a lot of, of data, not of, a lot of samples. And I was just figure out here that could be interesting because maybe if I go to my house, the doors will make a, a different sound. If you go to Amelia, will make different sounds. So to make your project more efficient, because nowadays almost everybody has a, a smartphone, so it's very easy to record audio. You could have um, a feature in, in your project is the end user, not the user, the final user, could record the audios of the different doors, upload it to the internet. The model is automatically trained. So I have... Uh, Audity personalized to me. That could be something uh, really interesting that you can uh, think about it. Okay, but guys, you were really fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My friend uh, has like the urge to say something. Well, we wanted to do something else because like we wanted it to be like maybe Windows breaking. But that's too hard for us because we can't break windows. <laughs> yes, it is. It isn't like fully finished. Important here in terms of the competition is the idea. And you have the idea. You think about a, a problem. You think about how to address the problem. You think about a, a prototype that can really show us how this can be implemented. From here, it's just a question, as the suggestion, Shansha and Amalia, and I did it to you, to add new layers in terms of a project. You were saying, and very well, the project is never finished. Nowadays, a product is never finished. The companies have always been, uh, been innovating and innovating and innovating and add new functionalities. And also the question of personalization here is very, is very important. Um, will not be so easy as you were saying, breaking the windows at home. Maybe your parents will not like so much. Or you know, imagine at school you break the window and you say, your oh, teacher, uh, sorry, uh, sir, but we are just doing something for a project. Okay, fantastic. But thanks for uh, appointing that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we also wanted, like, uh, as we said, windows. We can also use glass as another like representative, but that's also like dangerous and uh, uh, it's inefficient and like about the sensors and stuff uh, like we can't uh, we don't really know how to code and stuff so uh, you can actually see a pattern that most of the people from MISC have used like teacher and machine and like very simple uh, like uh, websites because uh, uh, I believe it's uh, Dr. Jordan that came and like told us about like uh, many different websites and teacher and machine just works very well and uh, like uh, we had a lot of problems with the like, coding and time so we just went for a basic outline of doors. Yeah. Uh, yes. I think, uh, about two weeks. I think, yeah, I think that's awesome. And uh, all the suggestions we give you are not like corrections or anything. They're just for the future because we can see how many capabilities you have. So, I mean, 
obviously you can't know everything about coding from now or how to use all the resources available, but the fact you came up with this idea and used the Teachable Machine and the other, any other resources you had to make this demo, it's like a prototype. So it's the idea that matters and the fact that you you kind of got in the process of thinking about AI and how AI can be used for good. So I think that's the important part. And thank you so much for your effort and your idea. Another suggestion. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, because it's very important. When we start brainstorming, we start to think about new ideas. This is very important. Keep just brainstorming, discussing with you, the team, and the others. I was thinking also about how important this project and critical could be for people that are living alone. Yes. Okay? And they have no way to protect them because if you are a family, it could be a little bit different. So this is another target that you should focus on. Okay? Just ideas. And most importantly for us to have ideas. From there, as Amali was saying, if we have passion about that things, we're going to build them. Thank you very much once again, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just have uh, my own questions. Uh, like, uh, how are you feeling after Portugal's loss against uh, Korea, I believe? I'm not feeling so happy, as you can imagine. So I think that Portugal is missing some kind of artificial intelligence so they can help them discover. And team yes, and, and team building, yes. And also so we can know what is the strategies of the, uh, the other opponents. I just hope that we can win against Switzerland, but they have to play better than they play against South Korea. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, was it uh, Uruguay that was going like, to go against Portugal, or was that something else? Because uh, uh, this guy is an expert on football. Uh, ah, okay. South Korea. South Korea, the other team. Uh, well, I've, I'm not a fan of football, but... Uh, I believe like they lost on purpose. Some people think they lost on purpose to help uh, the team. Ah, uh, okay, like okay, because the, the coach from South Korea is Portuguese. So <laughs> maybe they lost against South Korea and maybe the same thing with Spain. They lost, so Germany is out and Morocco is on the, on, on the next stage. So you, you, you never know. This is like the black box of AI. Sometimes it's doing things that we cannot know how, how, how that happened. As long as you don't take away grades because you lost. Yes. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> That's good, yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. It was a huge pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Do you mind if we take a picture together? Oh, no. We're going to take it over yes. there with Shasha.
हेलो okay so guys thank you very much for being here it's a huge pleasure to have you here um you are ah uh, can you just tell us uh, related the, your school here you are middle school okay we can't that's middle middle school okay okay so thank you very much Okay, as I was telling you, you are the last but not the least of, of the project. We have been so many fun uh, during this presentation of, of Easter Jays and such great ideas and such great projects. And for sure, yours will be also a great idea and a great project how to use AI to solve the problem that you uh, identify. We are three judges here. So me, Marco, teacher from Portugal. Amalia, you already know it after that amazing presentation that she did it. And I think that she inspired you so much to become, you know, computer science or engineers in other fields that are going to use AI. So Amalia from Greece. And we also have an online judge with us, that is Shan Shan. She is in, in, in China. And we will do your, your presentation. And in the end, we'll just we'll talk um, about your project um, and what you have to present this to us. Okay, so please. Good afternoon. My name is Rakan Sarhan, and today my peers and I, Adil Majil, he's going to be working on our key insights to solving our problem, and Abdul Aziz will get here. I will be working on the programming for our idea. And my main role is to make sure all of this complicated data is accessible to you all. And we welcome you to ICAT, our artificial intelligence program. First of all, let's understand what ICAT stands for. ICAT stands for Artificial Intelligence Criminal Assessment Database. So now that we know what it stands for, let's move on to the real question. What is ICAD really about? So Saad, what is ICAD really about? ICAD aims to make the world a better place. We wish to achieve this by creating an artificial intelligence program that saves facial and audio features. Thus, we're trading our information for our safety. We then use this said information to find and identify criminals and give them the justice that they deserve. We will then use this information on a website. And after that, ICAD will be able to use this information to help improve itself and learn from its errors. We made ICAD. It works by applying a range of inputs from faces, sounds, and perception. As you can see in this photo, the AI is perceiving my face and understanding my facial features. Here we use an audio. Uh, it, would, it would recognize the audio that this is Rakan's voice, this is Saad's voice, this is Abdul Aziz's voice. The AI would know all of this based off of the data we gave it. And after that, we will give this information to law enforcement and police so they will be able to uncover criminals from around the world. Now let's try ICAD in an imaginary scenario. Imagine this. Your car just got stolen. However, you saw a quick glance of that person before a quick glance of that person. From what you saw, he has short hair, wears glasses, and has pale colored skin. The police have caught three people in the area at that time. We will then use ICAD to find who the culprit is. Now we would like to show you the website, the demo. So as you can see, as you can see here, ICAD is... This is our website explaining ICAD to you all. This is our website, ICAD. We did this, uh, we worked on it using HTML. And basically, ICAD is all about facial recognition. So one example is, let's say it scans my face. It tells me my, my basic data. Now it tells me that I have long hair. Based off of your facial features, it's going to explain to everyone what the person has. It would create a decision tree. It would show that this person, if he doesn't have 
based off of the scenario, if he doesn't have short hair, he's not the culprit. He didn't steal your car. And ICAD would create a decision tree that looks sort of like this. Does he have long hair? Yes or no? If no, does he have glasses? If yes, then probably not the culprit. If no, he's not the culprit. And we would use this based off of the data. ICAD will also learn from its mistake. The decision tree we made was using HTML. We used it uh, to make the website, and we also used a bit of JavaScript. We also used Teachable Machine. Teachable Machine helped us make the decision tree that shows all of the data and make sure that it's clear for you all. And then it will, and now ICAD can use all of this information and show it with correct reasoning in mere seconds. Now let's go a little back when we just thought of the idea of the philosophy of ICAD. ICAD is about stopping criminals. It's about protecting the people. When there is crime in society, there is no justice, as Plato once said. And we based our idea on that singular quote. Thank you for your time. So, yeah. So now we're going to end it with it. Hey, ICAD, want to hear a joke? Yes. Have you heard about the new artificially intelligent Oreo? Oh, what is it? It's one smart cookie. <laughs> Any questions? It's a great way to finish your presentation. It's always good when you can transmit <laughs> good sensations to, to, to us that are here um, um, seeing your, your projects. First of all, congratulations. Great project. Uh, the, the idea that is behind all the things that you have building um, uh, concerning your, 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 your project, the way that you address it, the way that you identify uh, a issue that need to be to, to, to be solved and the way that you created is a project that has a lot of ethical implications on it okay because it is about um, identify people that make possible crimes so that is some a kind of of questions um, that you should pay pay attention another question is how we will work with uh, law enforcement, with the, with our authorities, okay? Because normally they... <laughs> yes, yes, okay, it's working, thanks. So this is two questions that I, I like to, to, to ask you. So concerning the ethical, the way that you are identify people that could, could com commit possible crimes, and if you think about how you can uh, approach the question of inf uh, inform uh, law enforcement if there is any situation that needs to be reported. Uh, okay. Can you just take one minute to speak with our team? Of course. Make, makes all the sense. You are the team. I think that would be the only problem with our situation. So, for, uh, for example, like, you know, police, they're strict with that. But hopefully, if we make, like, our uh, AI more known and more, like, uh, precise and like that, they will be able to understand that it's very good and there's a low chance of it failing. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I agree with you. And once again, great idea. Just keep working to make your project better, better, better. And we will find even new functionalities, new ways in terms of, of, of developing and dealing with all these questions. Thank you. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's an awesome idea. And also the name, I really like the name. Yes, very good name and very clear and concise presentation. I think it really helped us to understand your entire project and also the demo. Um, and the little joke at the end, I think it ended the presentation. Uh, on a really nice note, so good job on that. Um, my only question to you is, uh, 
do you have any ideas about you know potential design features you could add to your creation like how how could you make the interface uh more useful and accessible to the user like is there any color would you add any specific buttons how would the interface look like or maybe even doesn't have to be a visual design it can also be auditory so for example an immersive reader or do you have any ideas about that so i think the first question i want to ask first is what do you mean by uh by on the website or the program itself the artificial intelligence no i mean for example so the user would use the website as i imagine so would the website have any for example would, we, would it have any box around the person that recognizes or you know that's all I mean? part of the database eventually okay. once we put a lot of criminals once the ai detects it and saves them the ai would know that he is a criminal, he isn't. He is a criminal, he isn't. And it would go on infinitely. So eventually, the iCAD, the software, would know. It would improve from its errors, obviously. So in case there was one tiny mistake that accidentally messed up that he was a criminal, but it put him in the category that he isn't, then iCAD would eventually learn from its errors once you put the correct input. Yeah, perfect. I think you explained really well how it would work, like the technical aspect of it. And I also have one more question. It's actually, it's not, it's not like a question. It's more of like a suggestion than kind of food for thought. Uh, so do you have any idea about how would you collect all this data? And also, how would you manage all this data? Because facial recognition uh, you obviously get data from many different people. So how would the person be protected? Like the anonymity and everything. It's food for thought. You don't have to have a solution, but yeah. I'm just asking out of curiosity. So like, for example, in governments and like that, they take your fingerprints for your ID and you wish to like use the same way they use it. The governments use it to, to use our security and anonymous, anonymity for ICAD. Perfect. I, I love how you thought about all of this. We were actually thinking about that before coming here. We were like, one of the main issues with ICAD would be that it would not protect some people from their privacy. Their private information would be out to the public. That's the only cost for safety. Information for safety, as we said. Yes, I think, I mean, sometimes it's a, it's a good exchange of mean information for safety. Uh, I think in the future you could really work on that and maybe find even more solutions about that. I think it's a, it's a solution that could really be developed and could really could have a big social impact. So good job on that. I really enjoyed your presentation and I had really fun, you know, it was really fun hearing all about your idea. And now Shamshan, our online judge, can ask you some more questions as well. Yeah, first of all, your website is very cool and I really like the live demos that you embedded within the website. Uh, and I'm glad to see that you have a deep understanding uh, in some um, important ideas in AI. For example, perception, you mentioned that uh, computers use facial features to identify different people. And you also mentioned that uh, computer use like some wave to identify different human voices. And that's very deep understanding. And I, you also, uh, like lay out the decision tree um, that's part of the computer reasoning and which is very good as well. Um, so I have one little question, like nowadays, uh, a lot of people wearing like facial masks or if they're wearing scarves, um, like part of their face is like covered by, by objects. So have you thought about this situation? And, um, do you have any potential solutions for that? So nowadays, like usually when criminals and like that do something, the first thing uh, detectives look at and police look at are fingerprints. So that thing, so that problem is already solved. solved. So now we just want to improve that idea and use it in more ways, such as like facial recognition and audio recognition. I agree with the, my peer Saad. I think that this could still need time to advance because if you're hiding your face completely, ICAD wouldn't be able to detect 
completely. That would where that would be when some errors would go wrong, as we said, when it would get confused. So since you aren't showing your face clearly, it would be that hmm, there's a chance that he's not the criminal, or mm-hmm. if he is showing his face clearly, but he actually isn't the criminal, he would be considered a criminal based off of the descriptions. Okay, that's a good answer. Thank you. And I don't have other questions. Yeah, I just want to say once again how excited we are about your presentation and how great job. Just I want to tell you, just keep innovating and thinking, you know, outside of the box, just like you did right now, and how we can improve uh, the existing solutions. I think this is really important. And also what you just said, I think um, even if people are covered, maybe it's a good thing that the model wouldn't be able to detect them if they're covered because uh, being covered would if the model worked uh, while people are covered, uh, it would also open the door for, you know, misleading results and maybe someone would manipulate this feature. It works so well, so maybe someone would cover on purpose so that it kind of tricks the, um, the model. So I think it's a good thing that it doesn't, it doesn't work this way. So good job with that. I don't know if you want to add anything. So yeah, great job and keep doing what you're doing and think big. (laughs) Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yes, of course. Okay, so what we've been doing, sitting over there, so you can also cover on my job. Yes, we're gonna join you and we're gonna have some And we're just sitting down like a football team. Good, okay. Okay. Just put you around us. Yes, you just sit here. Yes. Hello, hello, Shansha. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, maybe I don't know. We can say goodbye because I, yeah, I, it's, it's a little teams, bit late right? there. Yeah. Yes, this, this was the last one. Oh right. Uh, I, I, then, then. Uh, do I need to send you the yeah. spreadsheet thing for the then, judge form? Um, uh, Amalia can can send us because we do it together. Uh huh. What should I send? Uh, the the spreadsheet with 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 the, with the results. Oh, we need the to, data. Aren't they gonna? Uh, it, 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 add the so isn't he gonna manage all of them? Sorry. So isn't aren't they how? Uh, yeah, aren't, isn't Ruz and the team gonna manage the results, or do we have to add them? Together? No, I, I was thinking if you send it to you, Shansha, and then you pick up the evaluation from me and Amalia, and you mm-hmm. uh, put it together with your evaluations, and so you have the final results. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Okay, so we will just evaluate this project and we will send you the spreadsheet with the evaluations of, of, of all the projects, okay? Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. Just uh, CC rules when you're yeah. sharing. Hi, rules.